Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, Toyota GR Corolla is perhaps one of the most exciting cars to ever hit the market from Toyota. In fact, we still can't believe that Toyota decided to create a GR Corolla for the North American and the global market. But as you know, the first thing I do with any kind of car reviews is a test for manufacturing quality and to make sure that it's well built. I should expect nothing less than perfection from the GR Corolla because not only is it built in the Motomachi factory in Japan, which is one of the most established and most experienced factories within Toyota family, but also this one is built in a special section of the Motomachi factory called the GR factory. And therefore, it's literally hand built by some of the best and the most experienced Takumi specialists. Takumi specialists are those people with 30, 35 years of experience at Toyota and only they are allowed to build special exclusive vehicles like the GR Corolla, which is built in the same area as the GR Yaris, which is forbidden for North American market. So let's do my usual audit in terms of the panel fit, the panel alignment, and the panel gaps, as well as to check for the paint job and the paint finish. And we'll finish off by looking at the interior fit and finish as well. Let's see if this thing lives up to the standard I'm expecting from some of the best factories in Japan. Let's go. Welcome back. So let's start with uh, checking of the panel fit, panel alignment, and the gap between the panels because those are things that are important to me. And let's see if this hand-built, Motomachi-built GR Corolla is better than other average Corollas or better than any other cars in this class. Let's take a look. By the way, I already did a full review on GR Corolla previously, so if you haven't seen that, Please go and take a look at that first for my engineer's perspective on the driving character. Today, I really want to focus on the quality of manufacturing and the fit and the finish. So let's take a look at the panel alignment first and panel gaps. If you look at it here, it's about four millimeter here and also four point maybe one millimeter here. So a bit wider than I would like to see in a high performance car. But the main reason why these gaps are a little bit wider um, is because this car shares the exact same body as the normal Corolla. So it would be built to a Corolla standard as opposed to, let's say, an expensive uh, high performance standard. So these gaps are ranging pretty well right on dot at about four millimeters, all the way from front to back, a bit wider here in the rear hatch, which is often the case with the six meter here. But more importantly, the gaps are very consistent. So if I put my hands over it and try to figure out if they are uh, aligned perfectly, you can see this mirror finish and also from here to here, it's just absolutely perfection. You can just see the line over here for the uh, protection film that's on this car, um, but um, there's absolutely not a millimeter or half a millimeter even difference between here and here in terms of the height. Same thing over here, front fender at the front door is perfect all the way. And the uh, same thing over here, I can't detect any difference and the corners and these edges line up perfectly. And finally, same thing in the rear door as well. Again, edges are completely flush and aligned with each other. Even the uh, gas cap, which is often difficult to get it right, is uh, near perfection again. I can't really tell the difference in terms of height difference. If you look at it like this, it's almost perfect. So yes, the gaps are definitely wider than what I would like to see. But because the actual body shells are identical and shared with the Corolla, there's no way they could have made the gaps narrower unless they redesigned the entire body, which is not what they've done for the GR Corolla compared to something like a GR Yaris, because the GR Yaris had to change a lot of the body panel back and even some of the front panels, so they had to redo that anyway. But GR Corolla shares most of the panels with the normal Corolla hatchback, and that's why these gaps are a little bit wider than what I expect. What about the paint job? This is where some of the Takumi specialist uh, skills and insight will show up and it's, the car is a little bit dusty right now. But if you look very carefully compared to many other Toyota cars, there's almost no orange peel. Orange peel is that kind of texture of orange uh, skin that you see kind of blurry uh, rippled effect. And you don't see too much of that in this car even though Many Toyota vehicles suffer from a bit of excessive orange peel. It's just uh, their style of doing the paint job on their cars. But once again, if I kneel and look very carefully, even though the car is a little bit dirty, the paint is almost perfect and has no issues whatsoever in terms of defect or uh, sometimes you find the paint drip in these corners. 
nothing. These one line up perfectly, lines up perfectly over here, and paint job is absolutely beautiful in this black uh, paint. Now I'm gonna check the paint thickness right now just to see what the number shows up. But I expect the paint thickness to be a bit of an issue as most of the Japanese car companies including Toyota have been steadily decreasing the paint thickness to save money and also to save weight. So let's get my uh, paint uh, thickness gauge and take a look to see what the thickness might be. So I got my paint thickness gauge right here which measures the thickness of all of the paint above the metal. That includes the undercoating as well as the paint itself and the clear coat. And usually you want the thickness to be between 100 to 180 microns. Most Toyota cars are around 110 to 120. Some manufacturers take a bit of a chance and their paint thickness dip below 100 microns, which I would not suggest because if you ever have to use a polishing compound to take some of the paint off, you're going to uh, cut right through the paint. So I definitely want more than 100 to 110 microns. So this is 130, which is actually a little bit thicker than uh, normal Toyota cars. 139, and let's take a look here. Yeah, 139. Now let's take a look here as well. 122, so that's pretty well average over there. And 107, a bit thinner here. Let's double check again. 114, that sounds a little bit closer to what numbers I'm looking for. So um, the front part of the car is a little bit thicker, averaging sort of 120 to 130, and a little bit thinner toward the back. Uh, let's take a look at the roof, which is typically different also. 102, so it's a bit thinner, which is expected because as the paint is sprayed, it tends to be a little bit thinner on the roof line as the paint dries and tends to come down toward the bottom part. So paint is always a little bit thicker on the bottom. So paint job and is excellent. Paint thickness is pretty well average, but I'm glad to see that it's not less than 100 or 110, which it would be too thin for my liking, especially if you're taking this car on a real kind of rally racing type environment where you might get stone chips and where you might get a whole bunch of debris to hit the paint. You want the thickness of the paint to be a little bit more than average. And that is the case with the whole front end. It's a little bit thicker than normal for Toyota standard. And that's a good thing because I definitely want to see this paint job last a long time, even if you were to take the GR Corolla out on the test track. Now let's take a quick look under the hood as well to see how well they built the engine. Not so much in terms of the engine torque and power rating. You already know those numbers. So I'm not gonna repeat that here, but look at the beautiful layout and the way they package this engine. It's just a work of art. Um, all the pipings and everything is so well done. It's perfect alignment. Nothing seems to be excessive. And there are many areas that you can see Takumi people putting little marks on it to indicate that it was done correctly. They actually installed this, then they check off with their own little markers and to confirm that it was done correctly. You can see blue paint, red paint, blue paint over there again. Uh, as well as another yellow paint, another red mark. Each one of these means something and they indicate it was torqued to the correct specification. And even the taping here, this is electrical tape here. It's just done so well. It's nice and tight. It's not sloppy like what you see in most manufacturers engine compartment. And all the parts looks absolutely perfectly built. And I have no doubt that the Takumi specialists who built this engine are some of the most experienced people in the world. So the engine compartment looks fantastic. Now let's take a look at the inside of the vehicle. So now I am inside the GR Corolla. Let's take a look to see if all the parts fit well and is built properly. So the first thing I look for is some of these plastic parts, make sure that they fit. There's no rattles or squeak, especially these uh, A-pillars tends to be a little bit rattly if they're not done correctly. And you can tell everything looks absolutely perfect. All oh, the plastic piece fit well. I don't see any kind of a problem with the edges. Even the stitching looks good. This looks like a fake stitching, but it's an actual real stitch in here. And it's perfectly aligned all the way uh, from here to there. And the uh, plastic pieces has just the right amount of texture. Sometimes uh, other manufacturers cannot get this right. Sometimes these plastic look too, uh, too matte or too uh, shiny and they look kind of fakey, but you can tell on most of the Toyota products built in Japan, the suppliers do a really good job of making these parts look as authentic as possible to mimic real leather or real material. 
and the stitching in the steering also looks fantastic sometimes these stitchings are not done very well if it's from another brand but I expect nothing less than perfection from GR Corolla which is built in Motomachi factory and built by Takumi people and once again you can see the plastic here the texture and the shininess and how the parts fit in all looks pretty well perfect uh, the only thing is that these plastic looks a little cheap nothing wrong with the fit and the finish and there's no rattles or squeaks but the whole thing just looks a little bit cheap for a car that is definitely not cheap anymore especially if you have to pay markup in the US here in Canada it's illegal to have a markup so we're lucky that even for specialty cars like this we pay MSRP and never more uh, so all of the interior components look good the leather components here looks good too stitching looks good uh, a little bit too much shiny black for me but that's the way it is these days and the seats and the stitching looks fantastic as well so the only complaint I have is that the interior looks too much like a normal Corolla hatchback not enough distinction that makes this GR Corolla feel special so I wish they did something more than that it just looks too much like an uh, ordinary car and honestly it looks a little bit cheap because the interior of the GR Corolla looks kind of outdated now so I wish they did something different but once you start to drive this vehicle and fall in love with the powertrain and the character and the handling it doesn't really matter anymore in many ways so as expected the quality of manufacturing the fit and finish of the parts are absolutely fantastic on the GR Corolla both outside and inside and yes the whole design looks a little bit outdated and it doesn't look like a high performance vehicle but who cares this thing is fun to drive it's very tossable it tracks straight the steering is accurate and engine wow the engine is absolutely immensely powerful for such a small vehicle and it's so much fun to drive this especially when I drove this in the circuit a while back but even here on a regular road well it's a lot of fun to drive I will warn you though that it is quite bumpy and you can feel every single bump on the road so it is definitely not a comfortable small vehicle just because it rides rough if you happen to live in a neighborhood with lots of potholes and lots of bumps this is probably not the right car for you but if you want the most fun to drive car packed into small package with an amazing turbocharged three-cylinder engine that will make you feel like a real rally driver well you can't go wrong with this one and on top of that the quality is perfect it's built in Japan by some of the most experienced Takumi people and therefore it is near perfection so I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the quality of the GR Corolla and a quick summary of what you can expect from this vehicle because I think it's one of the most fun to drive cars in the market. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe because that will be truly, truly helpful. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.